Thank you for joining us here today at West Potomac High School. My name is Alex Case and I'm the proud principal here. We are honored to serve as host for the announcement of the proposed Fairfax County Public Schools budget to the Fairfax County School Board. At West Potomac, our mission is to be the world's greatest high school. And we know we are well on our way to achieving that goal in part because we draw students from a local area that is economically, racially, and ethnically diverse. West Potomac students come from more than 75 countries and speak 36 different languages in their homes. Yet when we come together, all 2,500 students and families and work in partnership with the amazing 285 educators that serve this three building campus, powerful teaching and learning occurs and it occurs every day. I was fortunate to attend FCPS as a student from kindergarten through high school graduation. My parents moved to the area on the promise of the local school system. I benefited personally from a school division that nurtured so many interests and talents in me and did so continuously from a young age. I came to West Potomac as a teacher about a decade ago, and when I became principal, a retired uh, principal and friend told me that one of his favorite things about leading an FCPS was resources were such that seldom did he find himself having to say no to a good idea from students, from teachers, and parents. I regret to share that over the last three years, such has not been my experience as a principal. In fact, our campus, bordering nearby Alexandria City and Arlington County, often contends with strong teachers seeking higher paying jobs or moving to areas with lower cost of livings to support their families. This summer, I served on the superintendent's budget task force. I saw up close that FCPS is a system that is incredibly efficient and has done more with less for years. And as someone who has seen the school system from the perspective of student, teacher, and now principal, I can say that every cut the task force was asked to consider was objectionable and would hurt the quality of an FCPS education. Everyone wants their school to be world's greatest. We all support the kind of excellence that we see here at West Potomac and across Fairfax County Public Schools. I hope that today's announcement is one that will rally all Fairfax County citizens to support their community schools. As a consumer, as a taxpayer, and now as an employee, I know the success of our schools is intricately linked. So without further ado, I am so honored to introduce Fairfax County Public School Superintendent, Dr. Karen Garza. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you can see why we are so proud of our schools. Uh, Alex, thank you for hosting us today. Uh, they've been a wonderful host and it's always a great opportunity uh, when we have these kinds of events to highlight the great things that are going on in every one of our schools throughout FCPS. I always say the closer you get, the better we look. Get into one of our schools and you'll see for yourself why our schools are considered some of the finest uh, in the nation. Um, today, as we begin um, the discussions around our fiscal year 17 budget, this is a very important time for our school system. The decisions that will be made in the coming months um, as we uh, work with our local elected officials, our state uh, elected officials, uh, the decisions that they make will have a long lasting effect on our school system. So today is a very important day and we thank you for being here uh, with us. Um, the success of FC FCPS truly starts here in our schools, in our classrooms. This is what we're all about. It starts with those standing behind me and you'll hear from some of these folks today. In our schools, communities of motivated teachers, parents, school staff and partners work together every day, each and every day, to ensure students have the access to the resources and support that meet their, to help them meet their unique needs and help them achieve at the very highest levels. We cultivate across this system a dynamic environment where students experience a range of opportunities that spark creative thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and just excellence. Through FCPS, students can be themselves, realize their potential, and build the future that they envision. FCPS's reputation for excellence is forged through gen genuine community investment. Together, we leverage our strengths to the advantage of our students in helping them build and realize their dreams. Our outstanding schools are a source of pride for this community, and further, they serve to attract businesses and people to our county. 
Today, I ask our community to reverse the trend of underfunding that we've experienced for now over nine years and start today to again invest in our great school system. While it is true that Fairfax County has increased spending in the last decade, we are a growing system and we have lots of personnel, people intensive enterprise. It is also true that due to increasing enrollment, rising health care cost, and unfunded state retirement cost, we've had to cut nearly half a billion dollars from the FCPS's operating budget since 2008. We have lost ground on teacher salaries and have lost our competitive edge with our neighboring jurisdictions, as Alex pointed out uh, in his comments. We respect and value our teachers and our employees because they are the key to success for our school system and ultimately for our students. And this year we began the school year with 200 open positions in our classrooms, an unheard of uh, situation in FCPS. And this is a trend that we must not continue. But despite these challenges, our teachers continue to create outcomes that exceed other school systems in Virginia and other school systems across the country. FCPS is a tradition of excellence that continues despite the daunting challenges we face. Our on-time graduation rate exceeds the state and national averages. Our SAT and ACT, C, uh, ACT scores also exceed the state and the nation. FCPS's high schools have been designate, designated among the best high schools in the country by the Washington Post. And we are thinking about the future, and we do have a vision for the future of our schools and for our students. We are preparing for a rapidly changing world through our strategic plan, Ignite, and our portrait of a graduate, which moves us beyond the high-stakes testing environment to the skills valued by our community and our workforce. We want to prepare graduates that are strong communicators, collaborators, ethical and global citizens, creative and critical thinkers, goal-directed and resilient individuals. But we must invest in our students for the future of our community. Our students, our teachers, our community values FCPS's excellence, and I know that they want it to continue for many decades to come. Today, we propose a budget that stops the cutting trend and begins to invest once again in our schools. We must begin the process of rebuilding our schools and reversing the impact of the, of the significant cuts we have sustained after nine consecutive years of cutting. This investment in our schools must begin in the classroom. The skills that we want for our students are taught, fostered, and honed by great teachers in the classroom. Great teachers like our Teacher of the Year, Kimberly Scott. Please help me welcome Kimberly Scott. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Garza, for the opportunity to represent over 14,000 world-class teachers here in Fairfax County. My colleagues and I work tirelessly to provide an unparalleled education for our students, one that recognizes each child's strengths and needs while also preparing them for a world that is demanding more, both of them and of us. After teaching more than 20 years in five states, I can say from experience that Fairfax County Public Schools is like no other division. Education is opportunity here. Teachers approach each day understanding that it truly is noble work that we are being trusted to shape the future, student by student, morning by morning. Fairfax teachers are collaborators, problem solvers, and innovators like no others. And we have stretched dollars and resources farther than most might think possible. We stay in the classroom preparing for tomorrow way past dark when necessary to ensure that that next lesson is all that it should be for our students or that our telephone call to parents reassures them that their child is making progress. Fairfax teachers are also some of the most educated in the country and continue learning over the course of our careers. 
More than 72% have a master's or higher degree. And more than 5,000 teachers, or over a third of Fairfax County teachers, have already committed more than 15 years to the career while also mentoring our newer colleagues. We commit fully, not for multi-digit salaries, but rather because of our love of learning, our care for children, and the call we feel to complete this work with excellence, even though many commute from counties where real estate prices correlate more favorably with teacher incomes. In response, we ask that our community recognize what studies have shown repeatedly the most significant variable in the equation of student growth is the teacher. This fact motivates us all the more to guarantee that each day spent in our classrooms helps every student experience growth and fulfillment. As we continue to give our best, we ask that our community now give its best back. We must ensure that Fairfax County Public Schools remains strong and state of the art, a model of excellence for school divisions throughout the country. We must protect the resources we value. We must value our teachers. Please rally around us and for us. Please fully fund this budget so that my colleagues and I can continue the work we love and so that Fairfax County families can continue to be proud of the education that they've chosen for their children. Thank you. We are so proud of Kimberly. She's a, a wonderful teacher at Franklin Middle School, and I see her proud principal uh, right over here, and she truly is an outstanding example of the over almost 15,000 teachers that we have all throughout our system. She was also a finalist uh, for Virginia Teacher of the Year, so we're very, very proud of you, Kimberly, and thank you for being here today. We believe that in our schools, we have the greatest human capital of any school system in the country. And I'll tell people all the time, I'm just amazed at the talent that exists throughout this system. And today I'm pleased to announce that the budget that we will be proposing to the school board tonight makes a significant investment in our teachers and our employees. As a first step in a multi-year strategy in supporting our entire workforce, with an emphasis on closing the pay gap for our teachers, we are proposing an important investment in our workforce. As part of this investment, we are proposing the equivalent of a step and a 1% market scale adjustment for all eligible employees throughout the system, and an additional $40 million investment in the teacher salary schedule. While this does not completely close the teacher salary gap that exists, this is an important first step for our teachers, and it sends a strong, strong signal to our teachers and our employees that they are valued and we want them to stay and continue to help us be the best school system in the country. Closing this pay gap is critical to our future success, and we must make significant continued investment in all of our employees in the years ahead to help solve this pressing issue. And our students in our community expect and deserve the best. Beyond the teachers, the outstanding students of FCPS also deserve classrooms that allow them to have the opportunity to thrive and succeed while learning the skills necessary to compete in the 21st century uh, economy. Students like Sammy Ahmad from George Marshall High School, uh, please help me welcome Sammy to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Garza. It is a pleasure and honor to be here today to provide a voice to nearly 187,000 students in FCPS. You know, when I first entered Fairfax County school system as a shy 11-year-old immigrant from Pakistan, I did not know what to expect. My English was subpar to say the least, and I felt completely alienated not knowing anyone here. And 
I like school and I was a bit of a nerd, but it is difficult to thrive without a supportive community. And today, I am so happy to say that my FCPS education at Westgate Elementary School, Kilmer Middle, and Marshall High School has provided that foundation. And that foundation goes beyond the classroom. It is embodied in great after-school programs, epitomized by motivated teachers, and exemplified by unique student groups. Through the Superintendent's Student Advisory Council, I have had the opportunity to closely examine the FCPS budget. And I can tell you that if we continue this path of divestment in our education, the effects will be devastating. My experience, in, my experience in FCPS has been shaped by great teachers like Mr. McIndoe, who balances his personal life with sponsoring numerous clubs and student groups, to Ms. Gravely, my sixth grade English teacher, who inspired in me a lifelong love of reading. I have become part of student groups that have provided a valuable social and intellectual component to my classroom learning. Schools are the underlying foundation in community building, whether it's supporting my high school at a football game or representing my school in debate. I urge you all to get involved with your community and think of ways you can help your local schools. Today I wonder, will the Sami Ahmeds of next five, 10 years have the same opportunities as I did? I'm excited today on behalf of all students to hear Dr. Garza propose a forward-looking budget that is in the interest of both students and teachers. There is no more important investment that we can make than, in, than can be made in the students of FCPS. We are the future of Fairfax County, and when we succeed, so does the entire community. Thank you, Dr. Garza, for this opportunity today. And Sammy's parents are right here in the front, so thank you for having him to here today. I had Sammy with me at a business roundtable recently, and I was just, uh, of course, he's on my student, advi uh, student advisor committee, but I was so impressed at, at how eloquent, eloquent he was in front of our business leaders, and so that's why we're very happy to have you here today as well, Sammy. Um, in addition to the investment in teachers that I mentioned earlier, we are also we are proposing today, we are also proposing a significant investment in our elementary students through the lowering of class size at the elementary level. As I mentioned earlier, class size has risen three times in the past decade to balance our budgets, resulting in class sizes that make it very difficult for our teachers to be able to meet the needs of every student. Today, we are proposing an additional $10 million investment in the hiring of 165 new positions at the elementary level to reduce class size. These monies will enable us to reduce all elementary classes in FCPS below 30. This is an important step. We're not there yet, but it's an important first step in getting our classroom sizes uh, where they need to be. Beyond the classroom to, make sh and to ensure the continued safety of our students, we must continue to make investments in our aging fleet of buses. Today, we're proposing an additional $2 million to make replacements to buses that are beyond their useful life. However, today's biggest announcement is in support of our teachers and students, maybe what, uh, may be what I'm proposing not to do. And that may be the most important announcement today, because today I'm proposing that we make no further cuts to FCPS. After nine years of cutting, we knew in fiscal year 17 we would have no choice but to consider cuts to programs and services for um, our students and affecting our schools. So we needed community input. We wanted our community to have a say. 
which is why I convened the Budget Task Force and we implemented many new uh, tools to uh, enable our community to engage and let their voice be heard. Uh, we also implemented a budget tool, which many of our community uh, members took advantage of completing. The, the work of our task force, and I'm so deeply uh, indebted and grateful for them, illustrates the challenge that we have ahead should we have to cut further. And our engaged community has let us know what they think. They've communicated loud and clear to us that they want us to maintain the programs that make FCPS great and that they want no more cuts. The last two budget cycles, I have proposed cuts uh, in the budget. In fiscal year 15, I proposed 98 million in cuts and those cuts were made. In fiscal year 16, I proposed 65 million in cuts and those cuts were made. I can no longer propose cuts because by doing so, the implication is that I believe the cuts are appropriate and they are simply not. Any of these next round of cuts, if necessary, will change the face of our school system. The very school system that is considered the foundation of Fairfax County and the reason many families and businesses are here in this county or relocate here. So today I propose a budget that does exactly that. It invests in our classrooms and in our students. Our collective future focus is dependent upon a community that values the power of a strong education and supports the investment necessary to achieve it. We are pleased to see that our county officials and state partners, including Gover Governor McAuliffe, has publicly acknowledged the need for more investment. Today, we call upon our funding partners at the state and local level to help us increase our fiscal year budget by 4.8% for fiscal year 2016. This reasonable increase will allow us to invest in our teachers, support our students, and avoid continued cuts that have, would have devastating effects on our system. Today, as educators, we present the needs of our system our teachers, our students, and we call upon our community to help us make the modest investment necessary to sustain excellence. I'm pleased to today to have two community leaders with us to share their thoughts on the critical role that parents, businesses, and the broader Fairfax public must play in support of our schools. First, let me introduce to you Robin Hilton, president of the Annandale PTSA, followed by Fairfax School Board Chair, Pat Hines. Please help me welcome Robin to the podium. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Garza, for this opportunity to join to you with you today in calling for our community to invest in our schools. As president of the Annadale High School PTSA, Parent Teacher Student Association, I have the privilege to belong to one of the most diverse and talented communities in Fairfax County Public School System. Annadale High School was opened in 1954 as, and is an inter, international baccalaureate school, world school, which we are very proud of. And today, more than ever, our community is representative of the broader Fairfax County. Annadale High School is representative of the outstanding work that Fairfax County Public Schools do in preparing our children to be successful in the future economy of our children that they will need to compete in. The bottom line of the budget challenge for Fairfax County Public Schools is not one for just Dr. Garza to solve or for the school system itself to solve. It's a challenge that we, as a community, must choose to, to support the investments necessary to meet our diverse and growing student population while supporting the community schools. Our teachers and students will do their part. Now it is up to us, parents and the community, the businesses at large, to do our part. As a community, it is time to mobilize and let our voices be heard by those who ultimately decide the level of support of our children, teachers, and the community that they will receive. Every member of the community should let their state elected officials and the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors know just how critical our schools are to the success of both our children and to the success of the Fairfax County economy. The strength of our quality of life in Fairfax County comes in part, large part 
from the strength of our schools. There is no more important investment than benefits all taxpayers than that of excellent schools. I am proud to be a parent of Fairfax County Public School st students and proud to support the proposed budget today. I am hopeful and I encourage all of Fairfax County parents, businesses, taxpayers to join me in supporting it as well. It is now with pleasure to introduce Fairfax School Board Chairman Pat Hines. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Robin, for being here today. Um, it's great to have you representing our outstanding FCPS parent community. I also want to thank Principal Alex Case uh, for sharing your beautiful school with us today. Every high school in Fairfax County is a flagship school uh, in its own right in some way, and uh, West Potomac High School is a shining example of that, so thank you. Um, I also would like to recognize some school board members that we have here today. I see um, Sandy Evans, Vice Chair of the School Board. <laughs> Janie Strauss, who is our Budget Chair this year. <laughs> Tammy Dernak Kofax, our Budget Vice Chair this year. So they have quite a challenge. Um, Dahlia Palchik, our new Providence District Representative. Uh, Karen Corbett Sanders, our new rep from Mount Vernon. And I see Ben Press, our student representative this year. Thank you. Did I, did I miss any school board members? I hope not. Okay, thank you all for being here. I also want to uh, recognize all the principals who are here today. When I walked in here, I thought, wow, we have all the principals on the East Coast in this room today, right? <laughs> um, but I recognize some familiar and friendly faces from Hunter Mill District that I represent. Um, and I know that you are all here representing all of our educators today, those tireless alchemists out in the classrooms today doing the really important and hard work of the school system. So thank you very much. Um, today I join with Dr. Garza in thanking our funding partners at the state and local level for working with us to reverse the education investment deficit that we have faced here in FCPS. After nine long years, as Dr. Garza described, we need some good news. Um, teachers, specialists, instructional assistants, school-based administrators, all the people who educate and support our children every day deserve this community's respect and support. And we know that that is not just about salary, but after years of compensation decisions that have not kept pace with surrounding jurisdictions, we are at a critical juncture, we truly are. We are having a hard time attracting and retaining the best educators, and we know we need to do that. We must maintain competitive salaries and benefits for our teachers and other staff. But since 2008, revenues have simply not kept pace with growth and needs, giving rise to eight years of increasingly difficult budget cuts. We are now spending $1,000 less per child in real dollars than we were in 2009. That's real, it's historic, and it's unsustainable. The school system has had to raise class size three times, and teacher compensation is falling dangerously behind surrounding jurisdictions. We cannot sustain the greatness of our school system through annual cuts. So today we seek to turn the page and start a new chapter in which we begin to reinvest in our students, our schools, and our community. I know that the people of this county are willing to support a great school system. And as we ask in the weeks and months ahead, our local and state officials to fully fund a budget that begins that reinvestment in our community, I know that the community will be behind us in that. So I wanna thank Dr. Garza and her team um, for producing this budget. We know how much work goes into it and particularly for working so closely with not only the school board, but members of the community. I've never seen um, a leadership team in Fairfax County work as just as tirelessly and as closely with the community on building a budget and that's very important. Um, and this is a budget that gives me hope. So I do hope that everyone in the community will be behind us on this. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, and thank you, Chairman Hines. Um, today truly is the first step in restoring faith and stability into our system. Today we send a message to our students and to our workforce that you are valued. We have the talented workforce, the know-how, to continue to be successful, continue, to continue to make sure that this system is a source of pride for this community and to also be a beacon for other school systems across the country. We have the proven track record. We have the vision to get there. 
Today, we propose a budget that no longer cuts, but provides for only the basic needs of our system, while making the first of a multi-year investment in our teachers. This budget also makes modest steps in reducing elementary class size. I will tell you that a quality education is not a luxury, is an absolute necessity. A luxury is something that we can no longer do if budgets are tight, just like maybe that cup of coffee on the way to work that you typically enjoy. That's a luxury. A quality education is not a luxury, is an absolute necessity. I ask our state and local elected officials and every member of this county to support the full funding of this budget. Please do not have us have to contend with what do we cut? Is it programs and services to students or is it compensation increases for our empl employees? Those are not the questions that should be before this school system. This should be about how do we keep our system great into the future. Again, I thank Alex Case and the entire West Potomac High School community uh, for hosting us here today. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here. The skills that we want for our students um, and the future of our students depends upon the decisions that we have ahead. And I ask, I really urge all of you, each and every one of you, our entire community, these are important decisions and your voice must be heard. Again, thank you all so much for being here today.